What's up, fuckers? Hello and welcome to episode number 14 of the Anubhav Jain Show, the soon-to-be number one podcast in the world. It's been a while, hasn't it? Since uh, we've done one of these, uh, the last live stream that I'd done was on the 14th of May or the 18th of May. 18th of May, I stand corrected. This was uh, the Virat Kohli live stream that we had done. Honestly, when I was doing that live stream, I don't know if you guys could feel it, but I felt as if I was a man possessed. You know, the first 20, 25 minutes, I felt like a human being. After the first 20, 25 minutes, I felt as if I was running on autopilot. You know, that's how much I was enjoying the conversation. It honestly felt like a, a trance. You know, I'd entered a trance. Uh, hopefully, you know, this... Uh, this lives up to its billing as well. And this uh, comes remotely close to as enjoyable that was, not just for me, but for, for you guys as well. A couple of you guys tuning in right now. Satya Nisht, uh, tips and key things to keep in mind before applying in Goldman Sachs. We will go over this. We'll definitely have a Q&A section that we dedicate uh, uh, on this uh, on this episode of the Anubhav Jain Show. This is one of the, the solo episodes. Uh, so I'm not sure if you guys are familiar, but uh, the Anubhav Jain Show, uh, which is pretty much my podcast, right, has a... Uh, two types of, uh, of videos or shows that we'll be doing. One is with guests. And I'm pretty sure you guys have come across some of the uh, the episodes that I've done with the likes of Pat Cummins, Sing in USA, which was the, the most recent guest appearance. But then we also have like these solo live streams, you know, in the event that a guest is not available or when I just feel like, you know, chewing the fat, shooting the shit or shooting the breeze with you guys. And, you know, pers personally speaking, let me know what you guys think. I actually enjoy... The, the solo streams as much, if not more, compared to some of the streams that we do with the, with the guests. You know, I think this is definitely a lot more intimate as well. You know, when I'm doing stuff with the guests, it's just me and the guests. And um, I record something, I upload it on YouTube, but this is definitely a lot more interactive because I can see your comments coming in real time, which makes it fun. Uh, of course, you know, many things to juggle because I have like certain items on my agenda list. Uh, and plus I have to juggle like questions that are coming in or comments that are coming in. But I think it makes for a, a fun a fun roller coaster, you know, throughout the course of the 60 minutes, 90 minutes, sometimes 120 minutes as well. Because as we saw with the Virat Kohli podcast, I think it uh, the duration ended up being like one and a half hours or perhaps slightly north of uh, of uh, one and a half hours. Uh, thank you so much for people tuning in. I'll, I'll quickly... I'll quickly, I'll quickly tell you guys what exactly I have on the agenda for this live stream. Of course, look, I don't want to make it too structured. You guys know my style. You know, I have these points in mind, but we don't necessarily have to have to uh, uh, go down this entire list in a very disciplined fashion. Let's keep it as open-ended, as organic, as conversational as possible. So definitely, you know, butt in with whatever questions that you have uh, throughout the course of the conversation. I'll take questions. Uh, please keep the questions fun. Uh, I mean, look, ask me whatever you want to ask me, but uh, let's keep it fun. You know, let's not be too serious, especially rather Thursday night, 9 p.m. You know, why do so much serious talk? So let's uh, let's uh, keep it fun. Ashwin Prasad, you're asking me a very good question and I want to talk about this. In fact, that's the first item that's on my list. You're asking me, where does... Uh, where does all your energy come from? I'll tell you, I'll tell you, I'll tell you. So a, a couple of different sources, but let me get to that. You know, it's going to make for a very interesting conversation. Uh, and that's number one um, that I have on my uh, on my agenda. Okay. So uh, quickly going down what I have uh, uh, on my agenda list. Uh, so firstly, you know, my visit to the psychiatrist. I made a visit to the psychiatrist yesterday. This was my first ever visit uh, to a psychiatrist. And I'll tell you about, uh, you know, the interesting developments that transpired during the visit as well as in the, uh, the aftermath uh, of uh, the visit. Second, I want to talk about bouncing back from a setback. Uh, I was recently hit with a, a pretty hard setback. Uh, hard according to me, you know, some people might say I'm a fucking pussy. David Goggins would call me a pussy. Uh, but on Saturday night, I wasn't quite feeling it. I'm going to go into the details of what happened and um, how I've been trying to bounce back. I'm not the best when it comes to bouncing back. So I definitely, you know, want to get your opinions as well in terms of how anyone, anyone can bounce back whenever he or she finds himself or herself in a in a hole, in a precarious situation, um, in a perilous situation. But, um, but I'll talk about, you know, some of the ways that are helping me but would love to learn from, from all of you. Sort of the psychiatrist, not a psychologist. I might end up going to a psycho psychologist as well, like a counseling psychologist, but uh, a psychiatrist to start with. Uh, uh, number number three, the biggest void that I'm currently experiencing in my life uh, that I think a lot of you might be experiencing as well. Uh, so again, would love to hear your thoughts. Uh, number four, you know, um, we, we cannot we cannot complete a live stream without talking about uh, sport, you know, either directly or indirectly. So we'll definitely talk a little bit about the Euros. I have not been following it. I've only seen one match, believe it or not. Uh, uh, we'll also talk about the, the World Test Championship final. Of course, disappointing result. Um, for us as Indian fans, I'm not sure if any Kiwis are joining, but uh, dif dif uh, disappointing result. But I'll talk about, you know, what I thought was uh, 
a, a beacon of light in what was otherwise darkness for all of us as Indian fans. Number five, I want to talk about, and maybe you know, maybe this is some uh, a segment that I actually include in every single live stream that I do uh, that I do going forward. So let me let me know in case you guys enjoy this. But I was thinking of talking about the the words and phrases that I'm making a concerted effort to add to my vocabulary and subsequently use while speaking. I'm not sure if you guys have have seen my video. There was there's this video of mine that I created on communication skills, and I talked about the fact that you know more often than not, of course, this doesn't happen every single week. I wish it happened every single week, but I try, you know, adding new words, new phrases to my vocabulary. Um, not just looking at the meanings of those words and phrases, but also actually making a concerted effort to use them on a weekly basis during conversation, you know, during live streams, during podcasts, when I'm speaking with my mom. So I have like a, a few words and phrases on my list for this week. Uh, and so I'll go over all of them. Uh, um, uh, so that's number six. And number seven, a few important announcements with regard to what's coming up, including news about my sister making another appearance on the channel very soon. So that's slated for the 30th of June as things stand 9pm Indian Standard Time. So next week, Wednesday, the 30th of June, 9pm, 99% uh, confirmed. But you know, within the next day or two, we'll definitely have a uh, have full confirmation. Uh, I'll start. I'll start with a, a, a couple of sentences. Um, or sorry, a couple of questions, and then we can uh, we can jump into all the items that I just mentioned. Uh, what was your SAT score back then, dude? I had a very, very, very abysmal, diabolical, uh, atrocious SAT score. Atrocious in look. I had a twenty sixty, so nothing. It was bang average. Twenty sixty is bang bang average. Uh, and back then, look, my communication skills weren't as sharp as my communication skills are right now. Um, but but I I definitely made like a, a very concerted effort starting 2011, which is the time when I entered college to actually hone my communication skills because I actually realized the importance of this skill set. You know, if there's one skill set, if there's one skill set that you that you should work exceptionally hard towards honing, it's your communication skills. And the reason I say that is because this skill is very universal in, in nature. I can't think of a single field, okay? I can't think of a single domain, a single avenue, a single field in which communication skills are not needed, you know? So during interviews, during dates, uh, while negotiating a salary raise, or in any, in any domain, your communication skills come in very handy. So that's why I made a very concerted effort to hone that. Um, and by the way, by the way, that reminds me, I have a workshop coming up on communication skills. So this workshop uh, is scheduled for the 4th of July. So American Independence Day, the 4th of July from 11 a.m. IST until 2 p.m. IST. You can find details about the workshop uh, in the in the description. There's a link uh, and I'm currently providing a 10 percent discount just for my my uh, uh, YouTube viewers, my YouTube subscribers. So in case, you know, in case you feel that uh, it's a workshop that's going to be beneficial for you after you end up reading the, the product description, definitely sign up for it. Uh, uh, I'll talk about the workshop in, in further detail later on in the stream. Uh, but uh, in case you want to go through, you know, quickly go through the, the details right now, you can definitely uh, look at the, the link in the description. Okay, cool. So we'll, uh, we'll, uh, 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 um, We'll 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 get to we'll get to more questions. How do I remove this? Hold on, give me a second. I'm so incompetent when it comes to technology. Uh, there you go. I've hidden that. Okay. So so let's start. Let's start with all the items that I have on my agenda list. Uh, firstly, 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 you know, before I start with my visit to the psychiatrist, let me congratulate all of you. You know, we've hit thirty thousand subscribers on the channel. I think it's thirty point two k to be completely precise uh, as things stand. The fourteenth of June, twenty twenty is when I had uploaded my first video on this channel, which was how I got into Goldman Sachs. It was a 26 minute uh, talking about how I got into Goldman Sachs as the title of the video suggested. And uh, so it's, it's been slightly more than a year now, a shade over a year since uh, I uploaded my first video on this channel. Look, could the progress have been have been faster? Could it have been greater? Of course it could have. You know, there are people who hit 100,000 subscribers within a year, the people who hit a million subscribers as well within a year. But look, I think I think we ought to still take stock of the fact that it is an achievement. It's a small milestone, but it's a milestone nonetheless. And thank you so much for all of you, to all of you who've been a part of the journey. You know, I got this I got this comment on my Instagram, on one of my Instagram posts very recently. And uh, it was a slightly touching and poignant comment. You know, it said, you are amazing, man. Would you remember me? when you reach 1 million subscribers. And my reply to that comment was, uh, I I'm, not I'm not sure who commented, but in case you're watching, you know, thank you so much for the comment. Uh, I replied to your comment as well on Instagram. Uh, my reply was, I have a special place in my heart for the ones who've been there from the from the very start and showed unconditional faith and loyalty. Look, you guys are the fucking OGs. You guys are really the fucking OGs. Uh, it, you know, to be completely honest with you, I don't have too many strengths. I don't have too many strengths. Uh, uh, but one of them 
is definitely a strong memory. The other one being a, a self-deprecating sense of humor. You see what I did, did there? Uh, anyway, a strong memory. And I am actually very good with names. Very, very good with names. And it honestly, it honestly touches me quite a lot when I see the same names, you know, familiar names who are tuning in for every single live stream, who are pretty much commenting on every single video of mine. And I cannot, I cannot be more grateful to you guys who've showed you know, ultimate loyalty, ultimate faith uh, in, in my content, in me as well. And it's because of you guys that I can actually lift my spirits whenever I feel down and out. You know, I'm not kidding. I'm not kidding. I am very neurotic as a person, you know, so I'm very prone to anxiety. I'm very prone to negative emotions. And oftentimes, you know, I could be, I could be experiencing the highest of highs, but one, one, some, you know, quote unquote setback, right, can absolutely derail me, you know. I, I completely fall off the wagon. And sometimes just looking at the very heartening and inspiring comments that come in from you guys, you know, not to be overly histrionic or dramatic or theatrical right now, but just seeing the, the heartening comments that come, come in from you guys instantly, instantly lifts my spirits. It actually acts as a very good drug, you know, a good kind of drug. So thank you so much for the, the, the kind words. And I can clearly tell that all of you, all of you are being very authentic when it comes to your comments and your gestures, you know, I can clearly tell, you know, the authentic ones from the inauthentic ones. And it pleases me that nine out of 10 of you, if not 10 out of 10 of you are being very authentic as opposed to being phony. So thank you so much. You know, I had to, I had to get this out of the way before, uh, before kicking things off. Okay. Okay. So the juicy topic, the juicy topic, that's number one on the list, which is my visit to a psychiatrist. So I went to a psychiatrist for the first time yesterday. And I'll tell you, look, you know that on this channel, right? One of the, one of the themes on this channel is that I show you every single piece of my dirty laundry. I show you every single piece of my dirty laundry. I'm pretty sure you're sick of hearing me use this phrase but I'm radically honest or try being as radically honest as possible, right? Uh, so I'll, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll give you all the details. You know, I'll give you all the deets as they say in, uh, in urban dictionary parlance. So I had a splendid last week, an absolutely splendid last week in terms of my productivity, in terms of my happiness levels, in terms of the work that I was getting done. I was thinking about, you know, uh, plans to, to launch this online communication skills workshop. Things were going well. I was setting up a page for it, uh, yada, yada, yada. Um, and I was on a high. I was literally on a high in terms of my happiness, in terms of my, my optimism. You know, it, probably the happiest I've been in the recent past. And trust me, for more often than not, I am a fairly happy customer. Um, Saturday, I went out with uh, with a couple of my friends. So I went to a friend's place. Uh, we had a small gathering. You know, we, we saw the Germany-Portugal game. We saw uh, bits and pieces of the, the India-England game. Had some good fucking food as well. Uh, drank uh, some wine. So I was, I was feeling happy. I was bubbly. I was, I was chirpy. I got back home by around 12.15 in the morning, 12.30 in the morning, uh, midnight, close to midnight. I was feeling great. Now what happens with me is, as I mentioned, you know, a few minutes back, what happens with me is I'm very neurotic, right? So even the, the smallest stir... Even the smallest stir can actually derail me. You know, I can go from, you know, uh, experiencing high to come coming crashing down. You know, sometimes my mood can be like a Ferris wheel. The highs are very high, but the lows can be very low as well. You know, uh, so uh, I, I uploaded this video. You know, I uploaded this video on my YouTube channel, which was three years since I quit investment banking. My life has changed a lot, right? And I honestly put my heart and soul into that video. I, I thought about like a, a proper outline in terms of everything that I want to be talking about. I uploaded the video and I was expecting the video to do really well. For some reason, look, I mean, YouTube is very unpredictable, you know. Um, but I came back home, I checked the performance of that video, which is something I shouldn't have done in hindsight. I should not have done, you know. Sometimes you have to detach yourself from your art. You know, you can't be too attached to it. If you're too attached to your art, then the performance of your art, then your mood is actually inextricably linked to the performance of your art, which should not be the case because your art will not always perform well, you know. Your art will perform well at certain times, but it won't perform well at certain times. That doesn't mean, you know, you, your, your mood keeps changing depending upon how your art performs. So you have to have like a certain level of detachment. And look, this is something I'm aware of, but I don't necessarily, you know, do as I say. You know, I don't necessarily practice what I preach, but this is like a note to myself. And I felt that, you know, the, the video performance was slightly underwhelming, slightly off the pace. And when I say that, uh, I, I say that because... Oftentimes, you know, what pains a lot as a creator or you might be in any profession, something that pains a lot is that whenever you feel the result isn't quite commensurate with the effort that went into it, you feel disheartened, you feel disillusioned, you feel dejected, you feel despondent. 
you know and so that happens with youtube often times you know it's a very unpredictable game you know there's certain videos of mine on my channel there's this is one video that as you may that got me into goldman sachs i think it has like 2.2 lakh views 218000 views okay i swear to fucking god i swear to fucking god i took 20 minutes 20 minutes to record that video i literally took my resume and i was like you know what fuck it let me just turn on the camera it was close to midnight i was about to go off to sleep i was sleepy so i was like you know let's just fucking fucking get this done with uh, as quickly as possible i turned on my camera i started speaking and that video is one of the best performing videos on my channel but there are lots of other videos that i put my heart and soul into sometimes two days three days of work writing like a full blown script but it doesn't perform as well you know the, the performance is underwhelming it's off the pace uh, but whatever it's uh, it's it's a uh, as i said you know it's unpredictable and a lesson that i keep reminding myself of you know sometimes successfully and sometimes not so successfully is something that the bhagavad gita also says you know you are entitled to your labor but you aren't entitled to the fruits of your labor you know so i think sometimes you have to ignore what the result is and just take heart from the fact that you know i give it my 120% i did the process correctly the result may or may not work out in your favor because the result often times involves a lot of luck as well you know uh, so you can't you can't necessarily attribute a poor result to you not putting in the effort or you know you not uh, uh, you doing a, a a shabby job you know what i'm trying to say so so that's what happened you know but but you know this was a long story but next day when i woke up uh, 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 what happened the previous night is because i was feeling dejected i ended up stress eating which is what i typically do i'm i i often fall prey to my urge to stress eat only because food gives me that high you know i'm opening up to you food gives me that that quick high that quick hit of dopamine that i need especially when it's like you know salty or sugary foods as soon as my cortisol level or my stress hormone goes up right and i need something something that that can provide like a quick source of comfort food does that trick for me in college what the case was i used to resort to alcohol i used to resort to cigarettes or marijuana or weed that's what the case was in college but ever since i got like pretty uh, pretty focused on my my fitness levels right ever since i pretty much uh, like gave up alcohol not completely but 95% given up alcohol pretty much given up cigarettes as well now food has become my go to substance whenever i'm in need of a quick hit of dopamine which is fucking pathetic dude which is fucking pathetic you know and i'm trying to change that but often times what happens is you know especially with people who have issues controlling their impulses there's something called a meta moment a meta moment is pretty much the moment between a trigger and your reaction to that trigger in the case of some people during that meta moment the person is actually able to compose himself or herself and be like you know what let's not react let's wait for 10 minutes after which the effect of that trigger automatically wanes with a few other people because the brain chemistry is slightly different during that meta moment they can't really control or compose themselves as a result of which they give in to the urge or the impulse very quickly and that's the case with me that's the case with me so the next day when i woke up i was dejected i was feeling guilty i was filled with compunction and guilt only because you know i fucking stress it at like 1 o'clock in the morning ate like a fuck ton of peanut butter which is what i typically end up doing uh and then i i, I just started reading about you know why is it that i can't control my impulses why is it that that i can't do that so i started reading you know i i, I learned about impulse control disorder then i started learning about adhd as well attention deficit hyperactivity disorder right uh, attention deficit hyperactivity disorder okay and the the three the three most common symptoms of adhd impulsivity distractibility and hyperactivity and all three symptoms have anubhav jain written all over them all over them and that's what got me thinking what if what if i have adhd now look now look now look look listen listen to me listen to me hear me out every single person has these symptoms every single person is impulsive to some extent every single person is uh, is distractible to some extent every single person is hyperactive to some extent okay but it's the severity of these symptoms that actually determines if you have adhd or you don't have adhd theek hai i just feel when it comes to the severity i am probably in the upper echelons compared to others who probably don't have as much severity when it comes to experiencing these symptoms okay so i just came up with a conjecture or a hypothesis that i have adhd so i thought why not why not just go to a psychiatrist and get it checked up i'll just speak to a psychiatrist and ask him or her for for his or her opinion so i scheduled an appointment i found this guy dr arnab ghosh i'm not sure you know for for folks in kolkata i'm not sure if uh, you guys have heard of him and uh, had my appointment yesterday wednesday at 12 pm and i related you know my entire story my life history the symptoms uh, yada 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 
and he said that he thinks I actually do have ADHD. So he's given me some uh, some medication. I think some of you guys may have seen my Instagram story already. But I talked. Uh, I was asking you guys, you know, in case anyone has actually taken uh, medication for ADHD, specifically metfen. Metfen is the medication that I'm taking. Look, you won't be able to get this. You won't get this over the counter. It's uh, it's only available uh, if you're prescribed. So the government is actually very strict with regard to you know dispersing this uh, this medicine to people. But uh, this is what the person has given me. I was supposed to start my dosage today. I did not start today. I'm going to start tomorrow only because I actually wanted to do some research on uh, the side effects of this medication. There are a few side effects. It's similar to Adderall, but I don't think it's as potent as Adderall is. Uh, but it suppresses your hunger. It kills your appetite. Sometimes it can cause anxiety as well. So instead of actually calming you down and helping you focus and become less impulsive, it can actually make you enter... Uh, enter uh, uh, into rage mode. It can make you a lot more anxious as well, but it's more rare for you to be actually experiencing these uh, these uh, more grave side effects. The more common side effects are a lack of sleep, you know, especially if you're taking it much later on in the day. And uh, the other one being a uh, suppression uh, of uh, of appetite. In case you know, I, I, you know, I might not be able to go through all the 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 comments that are coming in right now. But in the aftermath of this live stream, I'm, I'm definitely going to go through all the comments from start to finish because I love I love reading all the comments that come in. But in case there's anyone you know who's taking any medication for ADHD, it doesn't necessarily have to be metfen, could be anything. Let me know in the comment section. I would love I would love to have like a, a chat with you with regard to you know what your experience was because I am a bit circumspect, a bit apprehensive about this, especially because the doctors actually asked me to take this every single day. And I just want to make sure that, you know, when I go off it, I don't experience any like harsh withdrawal symptoms um, such that I'm craving the medication or, you know, I, I don't want to reach a stage where I cannot work, cannot focus without this crutch. So in case any of you have taken ADHD medication, definitely uh, let me know. But, you know, before I move on to the next point, there's just, there's just one thing that I want to say. I'm actually very excited about this as well, only because, look, a lot of people who have ADHD, right? ADHD in a lot of people can actually act as more of a boon than a curse. Net, net, it has more merits than demerits. If you can actually utilize the good effects of ADHD. A lot of people who have ADHD have a very scattered brain, a scattered brain. But because of that scattered brain, their creativity is also a lot more enhanced. Now you'll see in a lot of my videos, right? In a lot of my videos, I may be talking about topic X, but I'll cite examples from topics a, B, C, you know, completely unrelated topics. And that's exactly, you know, what the fundamental definition of creativity is. How can you take, you know, things or elements that are seemingly unrelated, that are unrelated on paper, and you can combine them into a beautiful fucking synthesis. So that's exactly what creativity is. So the ADHD brain works in a very creative fashion. So that's one of the, the merits of, uh, of ADHD. The, the other one being, you know, hyperactivity. You guys ask me, where do, you get your, where do you get your energy from? Where do you get your energy from? Where do you get your energy from? The answer is not cocaine, unfortunately. You know, although you guys might, you know, want that to be the case, it's not cocaine, but Maybe, maybe um, I have ADHD. So that could be one of the reasons why I'm a lot more hyperactive. But that, I feel, is a benefit as opposed to a curse because, you know, a lot of people lord me for the high energy that I bring to the table, which which can definitely have a contagious effect in a very positive manner. Yeah, cool, cool. Uh, uh, now, I want to talk a little bit about bouncing back. You know, I had this setback. Whatever, I had this setback on Saturday. I'm neurotic. It takes me a few days to bounce back. Okay. Sunday mera kharaab gaya, mera mood off thai gum. Monday mera kharaab gaya, mera mood off thai gum. Then finally Tuesday ko, you know, Tuesday second half is when I started, you know, dusting myself and getting back up. Now there's some people, there's some people and I honestly marvel at these people. Absolutely marvel at these people. In case you're one of these, in case you're one of these, please uh, make yourself known. Let me know in the chat and I would love to pick your brain on how you end up doing this. But there's some people who... Experiencing experience a setback and within moments or within seconds or within a couple of hours feel completely normal. They can shake it off and they can get back up on their feet. I am not that way. I'm not that way. I've become a lot better because pehle mujhe kabhi kabhi ek hafta lag jata tha just to get back up on my feet. One week, one week. I've had a setback. Fuck man, you know, I've entered this cycle of negative momentum which goes on for one week before I can actually enter a positive phase again, phase again and come out of my rut. But now it takes me two or three days. But still, I think there's a lot of scope for improvement. You know, I can bring it down from two or three days to maybe one day or maybe a few hours. But I'm not able to do that right now. Of course, I'm work in progress and I want to. I want to keep improving. But in case, in case you can, you can actually, you know, you found the formula of how you can actually dispose the negative thoughts that might be afflicting you, that might be assailing you and enter a positive mind space, 
let me know. Please let me know. I would love to pick your brain. Which is exactly why, which is exactly why you've got to marvel at the likes of, you know, the first name that's coming up, Virat Kohli, Cristiano Ronaldo, like all of these folks. So there are three quotes, there are three quotes that I'm going to read out that I'm using as inspiration that have helped me a lot. Now, look, they don't always help me, but they sometimes do. And I think they might help you as well. And look, these are very simple quotes. These are very simple quotes. You might tell you, you might tell me that, fuck, you know, my, my three-year-old cousin could have framed that sentence. But when it's coming from someone you admire and someone who actually sets the right example day in and day out, and someone who actually practices what he or she preaches, then the same quote, right, has a more profound effect on you. Yeah? So three quotes that I'm going to read out that uh, help me escape negativity, uh, a phrase that I'm stealing from Kavita Batra uh, from the, the comment section. First one from Virat Kohli. He had said this after India were in a spot of bother. Uh, they were touring South Africa. I think this must have been 2018 or 2019. India were touring South Africa. And uh, India had their backs against the wall. Right? South Africa were odds on favorite to win the test. I think this was during the Johannesburg test that India ended up winning ultimately. Okay? He entered the press conference. Now naturally, you know, he's going to be bombarded with fucking questions. Oh, India in a spot of bother. What have you been doing? Uh, is uh, You know, are, are you showing chinks in your armor? Are there cracks in the in the arsenal? What's happening? You know, all your batsmen are failing. And Virat Kohli said something very simple. Very simple. He said, if you can stay positive in a negative situation, you win. If you can stay positive in a negative situation, you win. It's an art. It's a skill. It's one of the toughest skills. But I think if you can actually master that skill or definitely improve at that skill, like just staying optimistic regardless of how perilous the situation might be, you end up winning. You end up winning. The second one, Again, a quote from Virat Kohli. He mentioned this during an IG live that he had done recently. And one of the one of the viewers, one of the, the commenters had asked him a question. Virat, what advice do you have for people who suffer from anxiety and stress? Right? And there's no one who probably experiences it, or, or very few people who experience more stress than Virat Kohli does, you know, being the captain of the Indian cricket team or being the captain of a nation of 1.4 billion people. Right? He said, believe something good can happen at any time. Again, it's something that's very simple. It's not rocket science. But I think the belief that something good can happen at any time shows that he's an irrational optimist. And sometimes you'd rather be optimistic and wrong than pessimistic and right. You know, that's what an irrational optimist is. And the last one is a quote from Naval Ravikant, uh, whose name uh, you may have come across uh, on Twitter, or, uh, you know, I've been mentioning him quite a lot uh, on a lot of my YouTube videos, especially the, the ones that have. Uh, that have uh, published in the recent past, and I have this on on one of my uh, one of my post-it notes right above my desk. And I wish I was reading it more often, but whenever I do read it, it definitely serves as a, a very a very helpful reminder because it actually gives me the the shivers, the chills, the goosebumps. And he said, "This is such a short and precious life that is really important that you don't spend it being unhappy." I think when you think about the brevity of life, when you think about the fact that, bro, I mean, I can't fucking live all my life or, you know, a good chunk of my life being unhappy because life is actually short. It hits you hard. It hits you hard. Um, so I think these three quotes, you know, have been helping me. But again, as I said, I'm definitely a work in progress in a major way. I recently, I'm not sure if you guys follow me on Twitter. If you don't, if you don't, this is a shameless plug. Definitely follow me on Twitter. It's Anubhav underscore talk. So Twitter is my personal diary. I use Twitter as my personal diary. So I pretty much like post whatever thoughts come to my mind, especially, especially when I'm working out, because when I'm working out, my, uh, I, I, I feel as if I've entered this like very meditative state and a lot of th thoughts come to the, the surface of my mind, a lot of thoughts. And sometimes what I do is I just take a post-it note or some, you know, index card. I just quickly jot it down. And once I'm done with my workout, I just end up publishing like a barrage of tweets, a barrage of tweets. Uh, uh, but I, I recently tweeted about this, you know, this was, I think on Sunday or Monday when I was going through like a, a rough patch, but I was trying to get myself back up. And I mentioned, even if your efforts to get the better, of a recurring issue, haven't paid dividends as yet, give yourself a pat on the back if you still take the pain of getting back up after every fall, fueled by the motivation to take another stab at it. Uh, and I have something that's written on my on uh, on this index card as well. And you might call me lame. You might call me very, very lame for uh, for saying this. But 
I've actually started believing that uh, whenever you have like a setback, whenever you have like a fall, right? That could be a message or a sign or an indication from the higher powers or God or the universe, right? That Anubhav, what you're doing right now isn't quite working. So you ought to go back to the drawing board, further refine or fine tune the strategy and then come back with your enhanced strategy to tackle the problem and take another stab at the problem. And maybe this time, you might get lucky using your refined strategy. So that's uh, that's something else that I've been reminding myself of. And uh, I have I have something written down on, on this index card and it says, I'm grateful that there is a conspiracy to make things happen the way they're supposed to. The universe has my back, which is pretty much another way of just saying what I, um, what I, what I said, but something, something I ought to do a lot more of, and something that you guys must be doing. But let me know if let, let me know if this guys if, if, if this te technique works for you. I'm pretty sure it does because you know it's advice that's peddled by every single person. Um, but I seldom follow it. I never, I never, I never follow it, and I ought to follow it more often because I definitely think it's going to do my uh, my mood uh, a world of good, especially when I'm not quite feeling it. You know, especially when I'm feeling down and out. Just talking to someone. Just talking to a close confidant. Again, not rocket science. It's something that, you know, everyone says you ought to do whenever you're feeling down and out, but it's something that I don't quite do. And you know, the reason, the reason why I don't quite do it, again, being very honest and open with you. Oftentimes what happens is, dude, I actually shy away from showing weakness to a friend of mine. I feel that my impression is better in friend ke mark mein, ya us family member. Ke mark mein. If I, if I show weakness here, if I show vulnerability here, if I say that, look, this is what I'm doing, I often think about how the perception that that other person has of me might change. But that's stupid. That's inane. That's fucking senseless, dude. If he or she is a true friend who actually shows unconditional love, then the person won't be judgmental. And regardless of how, how, how uh, like outlandish your act might seem, that's causing you, uh, that's causing you, you know, these, these uh, negative feelings, that person will still be able to sympathize slash empathize with you. And so because I shy away from, you know, telling people about the weaknesses or about, you know, the, the issues that I'm going through, I feel I just end up, you know, being the architect of my own downfall. And so that's something I ought to, I ought to change. You know, I want to change my mindset, kid, bro. It's, it's fine. Like you aren't showing weakness. I mean, stop fucking coming across as a, a quintessence, a, paragon of perfection you don't have to bro you don't fucking have to you know uh just be just be honest just be open if he or she is like a, a true friend then as i said you know he or she will give you like proper unconditional advice as opposed to fucking being judgy yeah so uh so that's something uh i want to do which is why which is why i think you know what i'm missing a lot in my life right now a big void one of the biggest voids if not the biggest void that I'm experiencing at the moment in my life right now. And I'm pretty sure a lot of you might be able to relate to it, um, if not exactly in the same manner, but in a similar manner. Now, Kolkata was un under lockdown for a long, long time, for about like a, a solid month, a couple of months. And over the past couple of months or so, I've probably ventured out a couple of times or maybe three times, you know, once this past Saturday, another time to get my, my vaccine. Yeah, I think two times. I think two times that I ventured out. Um, I haven't done anything. Earlier, what I was doing, fuck, it's hot, man. Fuck me. Uh, earlier, what I was doing, was I was going to the gym every single day. So even when you weren't feeling good about yourself, just making a visit to the gym, seeing familiar faces, seeing people smiling at you, right, would end up doing you a world of good. mood you enter like a social territory, human beings are gregarious creatures, you know, you, you see people, naturally you feel like a, a sense of connection, your oxytocin levels go much higher as well, and you automatically feel good about yourself, right? So I'm completely in solitude. Now, solitude is good. It's good. I keep talking about fucking solitude. I keep jerking off to solitude on a lot of my videos. But not too much of it. Not too much of it. So I think you have to find like a healthy balance. Too much solitude can be ap apocalyptic or catastrophic. By the same token, I think too much socializing and very limited solitude can also have disastrous effects. So I think you ought to maintain that balance. So I'm not quite getting that balance yet. Earlier, I used to go to the fucking gym. I used to go to the gym. Hit on girls at the gym. Hit on aunties at the gym. Hit on the beautiful receptionist at the gym. Rita, Rita, in case you're watching, I miss you. I miss your beautiful smile. But now all that is not happening. All that is not happening. So I miss that. You know, so I can't wait for the gyms to reopen again. And uh, once they do, 
then I'm definitely going to be back and back with a bang because that's how Anubhav Jain rolls. So, yeah. Uh, Euro 2021. Euro 2021. So it's been quite the crack of a tournament recently, hasn't it? Uh, have you guys been following everything that's been going on? Dude, I am ashamed to say this. Absolutely ashamed to say that. I've, I've only seen one match so far. So this was the match that took place on Saturday night, which I was watching at my friend's place. Uh, Portugal-Germany. It was a crackerjack of a match. An absolute humdinger of a contest. An absolute corker of a match. Um, but I wish I was watching more. But I haven't been watching. Bro, I don't know, yeah. I mean, tell me, tell me. There's something about international matches that just doesn't captivate me as much as watching club football. There's just something about it. I don't, I don't enjoy it half as much as watching club football as watching Manchester United. And that's, that's the case, even if Manchester United are absolutely sucking. I just don't enjoy it. But here's my bold prediction. Might not be a bold prediction because to be completely honest, if you look at you know their squad and paper, England are fucking stacked. My prediction, England to win the Euros. I'm not sure if this is a bold prediction. Might be an unpopular opinion, you know, because when it comes to like these major competitions, England almost always invariably end up choking. Um, it was an exception during the last World Cup because they ended up reaching the, the quarterfinals, which you could say was them punching above their weight. But I think Gareth Southgate has done an absolutely remarkable job. And look, England haven't quite looked their best so far in the tournament. They've only scored two goals. But I think uh, the best is yet to come. And I, I feel England can be clinical. And if they end up beating Germany in the next match at Wembley, if they end up getting the better of Germany, their confidence is going to absolutely skyrocket. Absolutely skyrocket. And I call England, my prediction, my bold prediction, England to win uh, win, uh, win the Euros. Yeah. That also reminds me of Cristiano Ronaldo. I took his name early on in the stream. What a fucking legend. What an absolute goal machine. That guy's absolutely crazy. He's absolutely crazy. He's beating records left, right, and center. Left, right, and center. And you know how I was talking about like the, the worries that plague me? Just think about this. So this example comes to my mind. Do you guys remember? Do you guys remember? This was, I think, very recent. This probably took place last year or a couple of years back. Uh, it was a very protracted affair. A very protracted affair. So it stretched on for like a, a solid year, perhaps more than a year. The rape allegation against Cristiano by Catherine Mayoga. Yeah, this, this American or this, uh, I, I think, Hispanic school teacher come model, right? Now, despite the fact that that entire process, ultimately, look, ultimately, the, the charges were dropped. You know, I think uh, I think she falsely accused Ronaldo of having, uh, having raped her, but it didn't happen. Uh, but throughout the protracted affair for that one year, two years, right, when he was in the limelight for the wrong reasons, he was still showing up every single week and delivering the goods for Real Madrid, for Juventus. Week in, week out, season in, season out. Think about the baggage that he must have been playing with because of these, these rape allegations. It's a very grave matter, a very grave matter. His reputation was on the line. His career was on the line. But think about the, the, the unflappable nature of his mental tenacity that made him produce the goods score one goal or a brace or a hat trick nearly every single week for club and country now i think that's mental tenacity that's mental tenacity that's why sometimes that's why sometimes i think just reminding yourself what would insert the name of your idol here do what would virat kohli do in this situation what would a david goggins do in this situation what would a Cristiano Ronaldo do from this situ in, in this situation? And then you sometimes actually feel, bro. I mean, look, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not being harsh on anyone or being harsh on myself or anything. I can empathize. I can sympathize. Different people have different ways of reacting to problems. Different people have different issues as well, right? So I'm not saying any, anyone's, uh, like someone's problem is lesser or not as serious or someone else's, as someone else's problem. I'm not saying that. But still, like sometimes you feel that, bro, you're a fucking pussy, dude. You're a pussy. You're an absolute pussy. But yeah. Cristiano. What would Anubhav do? Ansh, ye mat bolo, yaar. What would Anubhav do? Please, please. In fact, I, I'm pretty sure you guys can learn a lot from me in the sense that you can learn from, you can, you can actually not do what Anubhav would do. That's how you can actually learn from me. So please don't emulate me. Please don't, you know, follow, follow my example or my poor example. You can learn from what Anubhav should, An Anubhav would, would have done and then not do what Anubhav would have done. That's how you can probably, uh, probably uh, 
you know use this use this mental model or this line to uh, to good effect yeah uh the world test championship final i just have a couple of items on my list uh, we'll go through this hope you guys are enjoying the conversation i can see the comments pouring in uh, from the corner of my eye. keep them pouring in um i'll also go through i'll i'll, I'll go through other comments like at the end of uh, of this uh, of the chat once i'm done with these last two items that are on my list right now okay so world test championship final dude disappointed man of course disappointed or to be completely honest more disappointed because of the weather right it was a very frustrating event to watch from start to finish because of the rain start stop start stop start stop start stop aur bhencho jab barish aani chahiye thi during the last session on the final day's play tab barish aayi nahi last day you know beautiful glamorous sunshine we get all 90 overs or 95 overs uh whatever but that's that's england that's the weather in england for you the weather gods are never ever kind seldom are they kind but definitely disappointed but uh, as i alluded to earlier on in the stream i think the one the one beacon of light in what was otherwise darkness that we fans that we indian fans experienced was dinesh karthik's commentary dinesh karthik's commentary and look I think you guys already know that there are very few things that give me more of a high, that give me more of a kick, that give me more happiness than actually analyzing and dissecting big personalities, dissecting fascinating personalities. Yeah, I've already attempted that with uh, Virat Kohli. I'm pretty sure most of you have seen that video on my channel. I think it's a 20 minute of talking about you know 10 of Virat Kohli's success mantras that will guarantee you success in life. So definitely watch that video. Add it to your watch later list if you haven't watched that already. But I'm gonna take a stab at. Uh, at explaining why i feel dinesh karthik was such a breath of fresh air in the commentary box and this is supposed to be an interactive discussion you may not or may agree with my points so please please come up with rebuttals please come up with counter arguments if you have any i'll definitely go through them in the comment section it will make for a good discussion okay but here's my attempt at explaining why i think dinesh karthik was was brilliant absolutely brilliant and refreshing in uh, in the commentary box now look i've been very lucky to have actually gotten up close and personal with uh, with dinesh karthik so a lot of the points that i'm going to be talking about right are points that uh, uh, are based on my observations at close quarters you know having spoken with the man having having spent time with him uh, having interviewed him as well on uh, on multiple occasions as well as you know what you can see from from a distance from afar based upon you know you what you might be hearing listening to his commentary when he's actually commentating in the 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 commentary box the one thing that i will say is that he's an absolutely genuine and authentic man and what i mean by that is that the impression that we actually get about dinesh karthik when we're watching on the television or when we're just listening to him right commentate is exactly is exactly what he is like in real life as well and i can attest to that based upon you know my my encounters with dinesh karthik in person that i've been very lucky to have had okay so number 1 point number 1 on my list this is like the more of the obvious point yeah he's got a very charming and charismatic personality and people find that very 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 magnetic there's something very sexy about that about charm about charisma and look different people can be charming can be captivating can be charismatic in different ways right so i'll i'll point out the ways in which i feel dinesh karthik is a very charming and charismatic personality look when you think of a dinesh karthik right you think of someone who's always bubbly always high spirited always enthusiastic always effervescent always vivacious always he's always got a smile on his face he's 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 someone who's always happy like always happy because he's probably you know like living his dream on a daily basis and he consider himself considers himself to be absolutely blessed to be one of the few lucky ones to be living his dream or living her dream right and dinesh karthik because of his bubbly nature even though you might not be seeing him when you're watching the match you're simply listening to his voice you're hearing him commentate i think that enthusiasm or that effervescence or the energy in his voice you can sense you can sense that you can feel that and that has a very uplifting effect on you and that's the manner in which i feel dinesh karthik is a very charming personality a very charismatic personality when he's uh, when he's speaking and he's genuinely he's genuinely one of the happiest guys you'll come across even when kkr you know used to find themselves in a spot of bother when we weren't doing well during the first half of the season dinesh karthik was still very upbeat at all times very very optimistic the second the second reason which is actually a very interesting one there's absolutely no substitute for hard work you know when i was at goldman sachs there was this one uh, one quote that a partner had mentioned uh, i'm forgetting what the name of the partner is but again it's a, it's a very it's a very simple quote but it's very pithy nonetheless and she had said the partner had said 
confidence stems from preparation which i think is so true confidence stems from preparation i'm not sure if you guys actually came across this uh, this tweet of uh, of uh, 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 about dinesh karthik so there's this one handle on twitter it's called cricket balaji one you know he seems to be like a, a friend of dinesh karthik's and he tweeted this out and dinesh karthik retweeted this so if he retweeted this this means that you know this tweet was definitely true right he mentioned when dinesh karthik and i sat to discuss his foray into tv the first thing dinesh karthik said was i can't be an also ran also ran being you know i can't be someone who's just ordinary someone who's just making up the numbers he took classes did mocks spoke to many who have done it was ready to take feedback and work on it so that's remarkable that's absolutely remarkable look he's he's one of the greats of the game you could say especially when it comes to t20 cricket right he could just like come occupy a seat and make up the numbers but he was like you know what commentary is going to be an absolutely new new uh, challenge for me so i have to do justice to it so regardless of his stature as a as a cricketer as vice captain of kkr former captain of kkr he was still taking classes doing mocks speaking to many who've done it and taking feedback from them and i think there's a lesson in that for all of us you know regardless of what we may be doing i think we can never really rest on our laurels we can never get complacent i think we also have we have to keep challenging ourselves so we may have achieved mastery in topic a but i think if we actually taking on a different challenge we ought to enter the amateur mindset being very curious and being willing to become a pro at it and so i think dinesh karthik has done that and look you know i've said this line in the past and i think it's 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 a beautiful line there's a lot of effort that actually goes into making something look effortless and we don't realize this you know we might feel that you know these commentators just simply you know uh, dress up in a very dapper manner show up you know hold the mic in the hand and just blabber whatever comes to their mind but there's actually a lot of research that goes into it and i can give you a couple of examples as well i'm sure you guys have heard of navjot singh sidhu maybe the young ones haven't you know i'm old i'm 28 right now but uh, rumor has it that navjot singh sidhu used to sit down in the commentary box with a book which had lots of words and phrases and idioms and muhavare and expressions that he would end up using while commentating and this was a book or a record that he had built up over the years over many decades of being a cricket expert or being a commentator peter drury one of the greatest if not the greatest football commentator still not retired current football commentator like i feel his head and shoulders above uh, martin tyler he does something very similar as well like he prepares for 4 to 6 hours before every single match before every single match and not just the premier league matches not just not just the big matches like the chelsea's and the arsenal's and the manchester united's and the liverpool's and the man city's playing each other but even the the non league matches or the 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 small fa cup matches where you have like third division fourth division teams taking on each other in fact you probably have to do more research for those matches compared to you know the matches in which you have the the likes of chelsea arsenal united featuring but peter drury without fail without fail very diligently very assiduously will sit down for like 4 to 6 hours before every single match to prepare notes for his commentary now when he's speaking when he's speaking it may seem as if you know he's speaking very instinctively but he's done a lot of the preparation and so while he's speaking he's simply plucking out all the information that he stored in his head and then saying it instinctively but the information he stored in his head and it took him like 4 to 6 hours if not more to store all of that information that he's utilizing during his commentary sessions the other thing about uh, dinesh karthik which i think separates him from the rest of the pack from all the other commentators dinesh karthik has pretty much shared the dressing room with all of the current indian players right either through his ipl stints or when he was playing for the indian team right so he's got a lot of inside gossip a lot of the inside scoop about all of these players he knows them in and out right so he can comment on their personalities what they are like share inside stories about them like insider stories about them which no other commentator can do because no other commentator has actually shared the dressing room with uh, with uh, all of these uh, uh w- w- with everyone who was part of the starting 11 for team india i'll give you a couple of examples beautiful examples you know maybe a lot of people didn't quite observe this or you know people may have overlooked it but he was talking about shubman gill and he mentioned during commentary in his early days at kkr when he was batting at number 7 he would often come up to me and say can i open can i open in shubman's head he always believed in his skills as an opener and today here he is opening for team india 
but that's a beautiful anecdote right who else would be able to come up with that anecdote so i think it adds a lot of flavor to your experience as a viewer when someone is telling you all of these anecdotes especially in test match cricket because it's a very slow game right especially compared to like limited overs cricket like odis and and uh, t20s so all of these anecdotes make for a very colorful viewing experience for you then he was talking about uh, he was talking about virat kohli and cheteshwar pujara so this was on the second day when both uh, pujara and virat kohli were batting so i think saturday evening and uh, the indian players were heading into lunch lunch break tha theek hai and uh, i think this was one of the new zealand commentators uh, simon dool or probably craig mcmillan who just asked uh, so what will the chatter be like in the dressing room during lunch so dinesh karthik said look i know virat kohli i know ravi shastri i know pujara i know all of the players typically during lunch it's very simple there's no chatter there's absolutely no team meeting they keep it very simple and then he also mentioned you know in a, in a funny way uh, that uh, virat kohli is someone who eats very light so he he eats very light during lunch and then cheteshwar pujara is someone who never eats who never eats during lunch to jo bhi like a small simple anecdote but still you know you it makes you as a viewer chuckle a bit when you hear these stories but no other commentator would have been able to say it because no other commentator shared the dressing room with the likes of kohli ravi shastri pujara so that's another reason uh penultimate reason as to why i think you know dinesh karthik has done a fantastic job he always always and i think this is a tip for anyone in any social situation you know so take note take note in case you want to be more socially talented he always got his co commentators involved during commentary he was exceptional at making conversation now often times what happens is you know especially when you're a newbie a newcomer you want to hog all the limelight you're desperate to impress as a result of which you just keep talking 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 thinking that that's going to make the best impression upon others especially when you're a newcomer and you're insecure about your performance right but dinesh karthik wasn't that way he didn't want to steal all the limelight away from his commentators every single time and i think you guys might be able to attest to this every single time he made a comment and instantly right after making that comment he would say isha what do you reckon you know speaking with isha guha maka what do you think is going inside kane williamson's head speaking with craig mcmillan and i think making conversation with your co commentators having some fun some laughter some banter some jokes or whatever some intellectual conversation during a test match is of paramount importance because as i said you know it's a much slower format compared to odis and uh, and t20s so sometimes you know the likes of dinesh karthik nasser hussain michael atherton you just want to listen to them even if the cricket is very dull drab stodgy boring you're just like you know what i don't care like the commentary is like music to my ears and i think when the commentators are actually having a laugh having conversations amongst each other as opposed to one commentator trying to hog all the limelight i think it makes for a a very fun uh, viewing experience and lastly lastly or maybe second second to last point dinesh karthik is great at analyzing the game absolutely great at analyzing the game based on which he forms lots of opinions but the fact that he had opinions and he had the courage to voice his opinions is very praiseworthy and that's one of the reasons this might be an unpopular opinion that's one of the reasons i actually can sympathize with someone like a sanjay manjrekar as well whatever maybe some of the stuff that he says is absolutely outlandish and you would never agree with it but the fact that he has the courage to make an opinion and an unpopular opinion i think is 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 praiseworthy and so i think dinesh karthik was a great analyst who did not shy away from making an opinion and after listening or hearing you know a lot of his analysis that's when you you in your head go oh you know there's a reason why he was appointed captain of kkr there's a reason why he's still the current vice captain of um, of kkr yeah and the last point that i have on my list something very simple something i'm pretty sure you guys have noticed as well he's just a top top bloke an absolute top bloke an absolute class act and a very humble guy you know he's never trying to stir up any comment, uh, controversy while he's inside the commentary box never absolutely never he's never being a provocateur never being an instigator never needlessly brewing up com- uh, controversy inside the commentary box he keeps it simple he has analysis he voices whatever his opinion is regardless of whether people might agree with it or not but he's always humble he's maintaining a very humble tone throughout throughout his commentary and people can notice that people can notice the humility coming through in his voice 
I'll give you a very simple story. You know, very simple story. Again, maybe I'm overthinking it, but uh, this was at the Narendra Modi Stadium in Ahmedabad, and I was there. I was there for filming purposes. KKR were practicing. This was before the sixth match or the seventh match, and uh, we were inside the dressing room, and the nets, the nets are actually outside the stadium. So the stadium, um, uh, uh, the the dressing room is attached to the stadium, right? And then you have to take the elevators and go through this this one lane. to to access the nets which are outside in a separate area and again a very simple gesture but something something that i noticed we were all passing by it was dinesh kartik i was there uh, the ceo of kkr mr venki mysore and the son of the ceo of kkr anish mysore theek hai and look dinesh kartik could have easily just like walked through right and we would have been walking behind him but instead he opened the door asked us to pass so said venki sir please anish please anubhav please and then entered so was the last one to actually go through the door so again a very simple act but a, a, an act of kindness nonetheless and i think it speaks volumes of the class act and the top bloke and the humble character that uh, dinesh kartik is but let me know your thoughts let me know your thoughts you know it's these these were my opinions i'm pretty sure uh, there are opinions um, that you agree with there are opinions that you disagree with maybe you have some other thoughts as well that i haven't quite uh, quite talked about but let me know whatever whatever you guys think theek okay? hai now words and phrases words and phrases that i'm uh, trying to add to uh, to my vocabulary and also make a conscious effort to actually use these while i'm speaking if you want to make a note of these you can note them down um otherwise i mean you don't necessarily have to note them down you can you can simply watch the the live stream again or watch this segment of the live stream again so the first one being spunk spunk is one of them so spunk pretty much means courage determination so instead of saying bold or courageous or uh, or using determination i can just use spunk theek okay? hai so that's one of them mortified so instead of using embarrassed i'm going to be using mortified theek okay? hai so mortified pretty much means very embarrassed perspicacious is another one it's a word that i'd first come across in the the barons sat guide um but i didn't quite know the meaning until very recently so looked up i looked up the meaning of perspicacious a couple of days back it means someone who's intelligent insightful who's uh, who's quick witted someone who's sharp perspicacious number 4 being oddball oddball means someone who's strange someone who's eccentric i honestly consider myself to be a bit of an oddball uh, it's a noun as well as an adjective so you can call someone an oddball but you could also call maybe someone's sense of humor you could describe someone's sense of humor as being an oddball sense of humor so that's the way that's the uh, that's the adjective form of uh, oddball smugness is the next one uh, that i'm trying to uh, put to practice pretty much means someone who's too full of himself or herself or too full of his or her achievements right uh, the the funny thing is you know i was looking up the definition of smugness and uh, i i can't remember which site this was but the definition that uh, that site presented was the quality of being smug and i'm like thank you that helps a lot smugness means the quality of being smug what the fuck is the meaning uh, but smugness next a couple of phrases in, in fact three phrases that i have in mind uh one of them being freedom is a fast car and an open road honestly i'm not sure where freedom ranks in terms of your personal set of values but in my list of personal values freedom ranks extremely high freedom is a fast car and an open road you know that's the feeling that freedom gives you uh then beware of unearned wisdom it's a quote by carl jung and i first heard jordan peterson using it because i remember he was having a discussion with someone probably a discussion with mark manson if i remember correctly and they were talking about the use of psychedelics so a lot of people you know have these mini epiphanies or these epiphanies when they use psychedelics you know all of a sudden they have like these these fucking strokes of wisdom after like a psychedelic experience and jordan peterson he simply mentioned he quoted carl jung and he said that look that wisdom that comes through psychedelics or through one psychedelic experience is unearned wisdom and so he used this quote from carl jung beware of unearned wisdom and the last one that i have on my list is horses for courses which pretty much means that you know there are different people who are suited for for uh, different tasks like different people have different skill sets right so horses for courses so you could say you know like all the 11 players in the in the indian cricket team right have different skills as a result of which they're playing different roles in the indian team so horses for courses you know that would be an apt description so that's it yaar and last may last may uh, i mentioned then i mentioned this at the start of uh, the live stream i have a 3 hour workshop from 11 am until 2 pm on the 4th of july 
right? So not this Sunday, but the following Sunday. Uh, it's on communication skills. It's titled the A to Z of communication skills. So I'm pretty much going to be talking about how you can become a, uh, how you can master the art of communication, the art of making conversation. How do you become socially talented through your communication skills? So definitely sign up for it. I'm giving you a hundred percent money back guarantee. Trust me, it's going to be the best three-hour investment that you made in the in the recent past. Uh, 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Link in the description. And I have more details in the description as well, you know, in case you want to look up everything that the workshop will entail. But I'll give you like a, a quick synopsis. Uh, look, I won't be, I'm, I'm not going to be talking about how you can improve your English speaking. Yes, I will focus on that a bit, but I'm guessing a lot of you who are coming to the workshop already have like average or above average English speaking skills. So yes, I will be talking about how you can take your English speaking skills to the next level. But what I'm more interested in is how do you become a better conversationalist? How do you actually charm people uh, and speak in a, a, a an engaging, confident and charismatic manner in any type of social setting? So your work setting, non-work setting, during dates, during interviews, while having a difficult conversation with anyone could be, you know, to do with you negotiating a salary raise so anything so how do you actually speak in a, a, a smooth confident engaging and charismatic manner in any social situation so that's something i want to be uh, focusing on a lot of people also shy away from expressing themselves confidently especially you know when they're up against like an intimidating personality so i'm going to talk about how you can express yourself confidently in front of anyone and uh, and just be a better conversationalist overall you know so i'm going to be talking about some of the tricks that i use when i'm having you know, uh, conversations live um, in the form of such live streams or when I'm speaking with guests, you know, even though there might be big name guests such as a Pat Cummins, how do I still compose myself and what are some of the tricks that I actually utilize that might seem effortless, but uh, there are certain tricks that have paid massive, massive dividends for me. So definitely uh, check it out. I'm offering a 10% discount at the moment. And as I said, you know, like 100% money back guarantee if you feel you weren't satisfied and you weren't quite, you know, able to extract as much juice from the session as uh, you would have liked, uh, just email me in the aftermath of uh, of the workshop, letting me know that you didn't quite enjoy it or you weren't quite able to you know, extract as much benefit from it. And I'll give you a full 100% uh, refund without any questions asked. Brilliant. So that, that pretty much concludes everything that I had on my list. Let's hear from you guys, my friends. Let's hear from you guys. Is... Uh, the workshop, a Zoom session, could we interact with you one on one in that workshop? Absolutely. I should have fucking mentioned this. I should have mentioned this. In fact, uh, uh, there's going to be look, the reason, the reason is going to be a three hour workshop as opposed to like a one hour or a two hour workshop is because I want to have uh, a QA session as well. Maybe a, a dedicated QA session at the very end. But I'm thinking, you know, why not just making it make it interactive throughout the workshop? So in case, you know, any questions pop up, just ask me that question in real time and then we can have a conversation, we can have a discussion. The more people, the merrier. And the reason I'm saying that is because the more the number of people, the more questions get asked as a result of which we just end up covering a lot more ground throughout the workshop. You know, we discuss a lot more topics. And so it ends up benefiting every single person. You know, as I say, a high tide raises all ships. So I think everyone will end up benefiting uh, if there are more people only because, you know, by virtue of there be more people, there'll be naturally more topics being uh, being uh, discussed throughout uh, throughout the workshop. Okay, let me, let me, let me, let me, what is up, Priyam? Good to see you, good to see you, good to see you. What's good? Good to see you as well. Video is lagging. Is it still lagging? Hopefully not. Hopefully my beautiful face is crystal clear. Uh, will you save this live? Absolutely, dude. Absolutely. Um, you should have watched this live. I'm disappointed that you aren't watching this live, but I'm kidding. Yeah, uh, um, yeah it's going to be up on my channel after after the, the live stream is over. So you can watch this um, in... Uh, in a retroactive manner as well. Uh, okay. Or uh, favorites in Euro. I mentioned this England all the way. It's coming home, baby. It's coming home. It's coming home. Uh, <laughs> uh, wh what about you, Shishir? What about you? Like, who do you think uh, uh, are favorites according to you? Tell me. Uh, when are you going back to New York? A New York blog, maybe, dude. I was speaking about this with Sing in USA. I'm not sure if you actually, uh, if you watched uh, the podcast that I did with Sing in USA, but I did mention this to him here. I haven't, I haven't been back to the states since uh, I left the states. 
July of 2018 is when I left the States and I haven't been back since. My sister, my sister keeps insisting that, you know, uh, I make a visit to the States. My mother makes a visit to the States, but we haven't been back since. Uh, we'll definitely go. Like all the family reunions that we've had have either been in, in you know, uh, uh, between India and the States. I remember us meeting in, in Dubai once. Uh, or my sister has come to India. Like my sister was in India earlier this year. You know, we spent like a solid two months together. But uh, hopefully I can go back to New York soon. Hopefully I can go back soon. Yeah, I miss New York incredibly beautiful fucking city and every time I see like a picture or a video of New York on my Instagram or anywhere online anywhere online honestly I, I feel I, I, I tear up to some extent only because I miss the city a lot and all the memories that I had um, do you miss NYC I think that's an understatement part that's an absolute understatement I miss everything about NYC I don't miss America in general all that much to be completely honest um, but uh, the, the biggest aspect of America that I miss is uh, New York City and the time that I spent in New York City and beautiful, beautiful girls in New York City as well. Um, lots of love, bro, from Kanpur. Thank you, Priyam. Thank you so much, buddy. Love back to you as well from Kolkata. One city, the city, absolutely. So I seem to be picking out all of Priyam's comments. You've become my, my uh, new favorite. Uh, Meher Beer, Chavla, Morgan Stanley or Goldman Sachs? What do you think I'm going to say? What do you think I'm going to say, Meher Beer? Uh, dude, Goldman Sachs, man. My heart says Goldman Sachs. What my head will say, you know, should I give you like a more rational or more measured answer? I'll tell you that, uh, look, both are top-notch. Both belong to the creme de la creme when it comes to investment banks, right? And oftentimes, you know, you'll be lucky if you are if you have the choice of picking between both. Oftentimes, you know, it's a case of what you end up getting as opposed to what you end up wanting, especially when you're applying to these very competitive places, uh, the likes of Morgan Stanley, Goldman Sachs, JP Morgan. So uh, be content with, uh, with either. Uh, but if you end up getting both, I would say, yeah, Goldman Sachs maybe. Um... Hey, will you talk about building up our profile in the workshop? Profile as in a personality development. Dude, I, I mentioned this. Look, it's not just going to focus on communication skills, but how do you become socially talented? You know, I mean, of course, you can become more socially talented through your communication skills, but there are other aspects of social talent as well. So I'm going to be covering all of those. And when you say building up our personal profile, look, to be completely honest, I focus a lot on personality, right? I think I don't have too many strengths, but one of my strengths is my personality of which, of which my communication skills is probably the most integral part. So yeah, I'm going to be focusing on all of that, on all of that. And as I said, you know, I was answering one of the questions that came in earlier. It, um, it's, it, there's going to be a, a, an interactive Q&A session as well. And there's going to be plenty of time for Q&A. And look, the, the three-hour limit isn't like a hard limit. So in case, you know, we end up exceeding that um, because there are lots of questions that are coming in, lots of good questions that are coming in, then, dude, I don't fucking care. Like, I'll go I'll go on until three and a half hours, four hours. So just sign up. And as I said, 100% money back guarantee if you don't enjoy it. Just email me in the aftermath of the workshop. No questions asked. I'll give you your money back. 10% discount, by the way, at the moment, if you, if you end up using the link that's in the description. So it's a discounted link. Uh, get David Goggins on your podcast. I want to get David. Look, David Goggins, there's no, there's no fucking way David Goggins comes on my podcast. Uh, he's too big a personality. Maybe I give it a shot. Maybe I give it a shot. But uh, look at this. Uh, Can't Hurt Me by David Goggins. Have this book. I barely read. I've read 53 pages of it. 53 pages of it. Um, because the print, the print absolutely sucks, man. The print here absolutely sucks. You know, it's it's so funny how uh, just the print or the presentation of a book can have such a profound effect on your reading experience. And the print in this book absolutely sucks, dude. You know, there's some books that you actually feel like picking up and reading. This one, although the content, content inside the book is brilliant, but the print, you know, for some reason is a big turn off to it. It absolutely repels me. So that's why I've only read 53 pages, although I bought this book like three weeks uh, three weeks ago. I read that book twice. Brilliant, dude. Brilliant. What a champ. Absolute champ. Did you like it? Did you enjoy it? Uh, tell me more about your reading experience. Uh, is it worth, you know, reading from start to finish? You know, if, if it's not, then I'm not going to read the rest of it. Like, I mean, based, up, based upon the reviews that I've seen, it's an absolute, uh, it's an absolute cracker of a book. Mm -mm -mm. what's up kevin what's up kevin kevin koshi double k long time no see buddy haven't seen your name uh feature on my channel in a long long time hope you're doing well uh what are your hobbies what are your hobbies that's a good question yeah what are your hobbies um so i honestly consider a lot of the content creation stuff that I do, like on YouTube, like some of the fucking reels that I create on Instagram. I think that's that's a hobbyist endeavor. Um, 
So I enjoy doing that, especially because it involves a lot of creativity. You know, when I'm when I'm thinking about what to say in a script, it's not that I just turn on the camera and just blurt out whatever thoughts are coming to my mind. I want to have structured thoughts as opposed to unstructured thoughts. I mean, I can still speak extemporaneously, but it's going to be very unstructured the manner in which I end up speaking. And so, uh, as a uh, uh, so yeah, just thinking about you know what the outline should be, what I can mention, how can I actually maximize the value that I'm providing to the people who might end up watching the the video. I think that that keeps my 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 brain running, that keeps my brain sharp. So I'd say that's one of my hobbies. And the other one being watching Manchester United, watching sport in general, watching Virat Kohli bat. Um, so cricket, football, sport uh, that occupies a lot a lot of my time. Um, what are the signs which indicate the need to visit a psychiatrist or therapist? Dude, it, it could be anything, Priyanka. It could be anything, you know. Like, I went for a very specific reason, but uh, the issue that might be plaguing you could be something that's very different. Could be something that's very different, right? So, if, if you have any, any recurring problem, right? A problem that you haven't been able to get the, the better of. Something that keeps coming back to haunt you. Something to do with your, your emotions, right? then maybe, maybe it might be worth a visit. Now, I'm not, I'm not recommending that you ought to make a visit. Okay? I'm not a, a medical practitioner. So don't take my advice uh, seriously, right? Take it with a pinch of salt. But if you feel there's a recurring problem, right? And despite your best efforts, you haven't been able to get the better of it, then maybe pay one visit, see how you feel. And if you feel the need to pay more visits in the future, then it's your call. That's what I would say. Upload more vlogs. I will. If you end up watching all my vlogs, if you subscribe to my channel, and if you like all my vlogs, I'll definitely upload more vlogs. Deal or no deal? Deal or no deal? Deal. Cool. <laughs> uh, will you uh, go back to working in investment banking ever? I doubt it. I don't think so. I'll say, you know, typically I say never say never. But in this case, I'm fairly certain in all probability I'm not going to go back to investment banking. Um, I don't know if I'll go back to finance in general, but I don't think I'm going to go back to investment banking. Um, but I can still help you guys with, you know, any any doubts or questions that you guys have with uh, regard to investment banking. That's one of the reasons I wrote that ebook as well, uh, The Art of Breaking into Investment Banking. So uh, check it out. Check it out. I've heard I've heard very good reviews from the people who've actually read that read that ebook. So in case you're interested in breaking in, especially if you feel the odds might be against you, um, then I think um, that book might be a good investment to make. Yeah. How do you keep your spirits high? <laughs> it's funny you asked me this question because I was I was talking about this early on in the live stream. Uh, when I'm happy, I'm really fucking happy. But when I'm sad, I'm absolutely miserable absolutely miserable um currently i'm much better compared to you know the state or the plight that i found myself in on saturday sunday monday i wasn't feeling good or oh, sunday monday um but uh, spirits high uh, i i draw inspiration from the power of others as examples so you know think about your idols um so uh, drawing inspiration from them and to be completely honest if you actually feel that you are in some way shape or form right directly or indirectly actually trying to fulfill your purpose in life or doing whatever it is that gives you that kick, that gives you that, that high, you'll automatically be upbeat in lively spirits. You'll be energetic. Whereas you could be on nine hours of sleep or 10 hours of sleep. But if you're doing something or spending like a majority of your waking hours doing shit, absolute shit, then you'll feel unenthused throughout the day throughout the day, even though you could be in nine or 10 hours of sleep. And I'm not kidding, dude. Sometimes, sometimes, you know, I could be in four hours of sleep, but I'm feeling brilliant about myself. I'm feeling absolutely brilliant about myself. On those days, when I hit the gym, I fucking smash my records, smash my PRs, absolutely smash them. But on days when I'm not feeling good about myself, I could have slept for 10 hours and I can't fucking lift a 2.5 pound plate. <laughs> I'm not kidding. I'm not kidding. So it's so funny how much of it is mental, dude. How much of it is mental? It ab absolutely baffles me. Absolutely baffles me. Yeah. Uh, Anubhav, I would recommend uh, Man's Search for Meaning by Victor E. Frankel. It was a really insightful, really insightful for me when I found myself in a rut. Highly recommend it. Dude, thank you so much, Ankit. Thank you so much. I'll definitely give it a, uh, I'll add it to my list. I had started reading Man's Search for Meaning uh, last year, maybe one and a half years back. 
I went through 20, 25 pages. I did not end up reading the rest of it, which is pretty much the story of my life as a, as a reader, you know, starting multiple working books, reading 20, 30 pages and then quitting, quitting. Um, for some reason, like it's hard for me to actually complete something from start to finish. You know, oftentimes I find myself a mile wide, but only an inch deep. I start multiple different projects and I feel as if, you know, I'm making progress on so many different fronts, but not one of those I bring to completion. So that's something I want to be working on as well. And uh, hopefully the completion of this book is something that I can do based upon your recommendation, but appreciate, appreciate the well-meaning recommendation, buddy. Um, beautiful quote, absolutely beautiful quote. I think it was Seneca who said this, right? Karthik? I think Seneca said this, you suffer more in imagination than in reality. And I think this was some Ryan Holiday book that I was reading, you know, either ego is your enemy or the stillness, stillness is the key. One of two, one of those two books. And I think Ryan Holiday brought up, uh, brought up this quote by, uh, by Seneca. Yeah. While your transformation physical, did you keep track of uh, your calories or anything similar? Very good question, dude. Very good question. So during my transformation, what I had done was during those, those three months, you know, I had made fitness my number one priority, my absolutely overwhelming number one priority. And I felt that, you know, everything else can be put on the back burner temporarily because for those two or three months leading up to the IPL, I felt that I have to be in pristine and immaculate shape. I'm a shadow of my former self, but I'm trying to get back on track. But yeah, during those three months, because fitness was my number one priority, right? And I wanted to leave absolutely no stone unturned in a bid to achieve elite level fitness, I bought uh, a weighing scale. I bought a weighing scale. It's this company called Healthline. Um, it's it's working perfectly. It's still working. And during the first few weeks of, after having purchased that weighing scale, I was actually tracking every single calorie, every single calorie. It was painful. It was tedious, but it was a good investment because what oftentimes happens is, right, or what will happen is that eventually, especially, you know, if there's not too much variation in what you're eating on a day-to-day -day basis, right, if you're pretty much sticking to the same set of uh, food items uh, from one day to another, then after a few weeks of measuring, you get a very good sense of how many calories there are in a certain item or a certain dish or a certain food. And then you don't necessarily have to go through the very painstaking process of measuring every single ounce of what you're eating. So, so go through the pain for maybe a couple of weeks, three weeks. And then once you've developed like a strong enough mental calculator, then you don't necessarily have to need the, you don't necessarily have to use the, the weighing scale. How is the life of a VP in Goldman Sachs? Uh, Mega B VP Thane, so I cannot speak from personal experience, CA Ajay Agarwal, but a, a, a VP is pretty much entrusted with the task of winning business for the bank. You know, when you're an analyst, when you're an associate, you aren't expected to actually go out and win new business for the bank. But as a VP, that's how your worth is measured. And so when you're, when you're up for promotion, when you're gunning for a promotion from VP to... Uh, to MD, they're going to look at how much business have you brought into the bank. So that's why there are lots of people, there are lots of VPs who remain VPs for 10 or 15 years only because they haven't quite brought in enough business to warrant a promotion from VP to MD. But there's some, some VPs who end up getting promoted to MD within a couple of years only because, you know, they're fucking money makers for the bank. They're rain makers. They're rain makers. Um, bro, I have one question. Does your ebook talk about networking tricks? There's one entire chapter entire chapter that's dedicated to networking and networking not just in person so i talk a lot about you know coffee chats but networking virtually as well you know when you have like these zoom interviews when you have uh, when you want to set up uh, these informational interviews i talk a lot about informational interviews and the power of, of information informational interviews only because if you go to a non target school you don't get too many opportunities to actually speak with speak with uh, uh, bank representatives in person so you have to actually reach out to these people through LinkedIn, find out the email address, set up an informational interview, after which you might, you might be put in the, put in the pool of candidates, you know, for a formal interview. So I talk about all of that informational interviews, networking, coffee chats in person, as well as, you know, over the phone and virtually. Mm -mm. Jyoti, I've been seeing your name on my channel a lot recently. Thank you so much for the, the lovely comments. Uh, hi, I wanted to see a therapist for the longest time, but can't seem to get over the internalized stigma around visiting one. Anything to get over it. Also finish the ebook. It was absolutely amazing. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for the kind words. Uh, I haven't been to a therapist myself. I've been to a psychiatrist. I haven't been to a therapist. But I think, I don't know. I, I think it's 
I mean, look, I, I might have a biased opinion only because I feel that uh, therapy is of utmost importance, and therapy is something that actually shines light into into the the deepest and the darkest dungeons of your being. In other words, it makes you a lot more self-aware, right? Which I think does all the magic for you in life. So I would say go for it. I would say go for it. But what I will say, in addition, is that you don't necessarily have to seek out a therapist. There are lots of forms of self therapy as well. So something that has been helping me, and again, you don't necessarily have to have to follow me. I'm just giving you my example. Something that's been helping me a lot, and I actually learned this from Tanmay Bhatt, believe it or not. You know, because he went through this was last year, a couple of years back. He went through like a a very depressive phase in his in his life. He was. pretty much missing in action you know uh, he was off the grid for a year a solid year and then he was focusing on himself building himself and now look at him you know he came back with a fucking bang uh, but tanmay bhat spoke about the fact that you know whenever whenever there's a problem whenever there's a recurring problem in your life after each episode that you have with that recurring problem just come back just come back and describe in detail describe in detail now you don't have to write in a very sophisticated manner okay you can just like jot down something on a piece of paper um it doesn't have to be legible also you know as long as you understand what you're writing you can open open up a google doc which is typically what i do and i just typically just recount the entire episode or the entire experience what happened what was the trigger what led to it what was i feeling when i felt that trigger why couldn't i stop myself why did i give in to that impulse how did i feel later is it something i want to repeat in the future given how how pathetic i felt in the aftermath of the act that i did and what that helps in doing is every time you have such an episode theek hai and you note it down after a while after a while after you've had like multiple entries in your journal or your diary or your whatever your your uh, your google doc you start seeing recurring patterns you start seeing a theme you start noticing that oh you know Nine times out of ten, I have fallen prey to this particular trigger. So how can I actually avoid my exposure to that trigger? And so that's how I feel. You know, journaling helps, and journaling is one of the best forms of self therapy. So I would say try self therapy. If it doesn't work, then go for it. Yeah, visit a visit a therapist. Uh, I think you live in Calcutta, right, Jyoti? I believe you live in Calcutta. I might be completely wrong, but I was actually looking up therapists in Kolkata. Um, I found this this one institute called Over a Cup. I think it's called Over a Cup. Over a Cup. Uh, it's an institution has uh, they they've got lots of therapists. I think like six or seven therapists. You can schedule an appointment with any of them. I think it's a forty five minute session. So I would say, dude, experiment, experiment. Go for one session. If it works out, fine, continue. If it doesn't, screw it, discard it. Mm-hmm. What is this? Is this some inside joke? I think this is the only channel in the world where Binod will not be spammed. Am I missing something? Binod rings a bell. Yeah, sounds familiar. What is this? I'm forgetting. Uh, your views on uh, YouTubers ruining boxing, lol. Look, you know, to be completely honest, I have a slightly. contrarian view at least uh, contrarian compared to your view i'm a big fan of logan paul i'm a big fan of logan paul i like people who are who are slightly eccentric who are odd balls who are recalcitrants and logan paul is actually a bloody maverick actually a bloody maverick and i think there's no word that describes him more accurately more aptly the maverick you know which is the name of his brand he's an absolute maverick and this there's just something about these these maverick sort of personalities that captivates me that fascinates me they might come across as obnoxious but sometimes you have to load the fact that you know they have the balls to go against the grain um and i like that i like that now when it comes to ruining boxing look i don't know i haven't been like a boxing fiend or anything i wouldn't even call myself like a boxing enthusiast i might end, end up watching bits and pieces of it you know i might end up watching the highlights on youtube um uh, but it's a crazy world that we live in isn't it it's an absolutely crazy world like 2 years back who would have thought that you know now you'll have like these massive youtubers boxing with the likes of mike tyson floyd mayweather it's an absolutely crazy world isn't it <laughs> yeah bro actually what is the goal of this video can you explain i just came here randomly 
कैच अप यार जस्ट कैच अप जस्ट कैजुअल कैच अप मुझे बात करने में मजा आता है आई लव इंटरक्टिंग विद पीपल so uh, i just thought about doing a, a catch up live stream yaar it's been a while the last one that i did was on the 18th of may where i spoke about how virat kohli can change your life that was interesting so i thought you know since it's been a while uh, i should probably do one uh, again so so that's it where in north kolkata dada i'm actually in south kolkata uh, near chetla that's where i am uh kavita beautiful question one query is it okay to confront people when they are wrong without hurting them at the same time uh these are my views these are my views and i've actually learned a lot from joe rogan in this regard uh like him or not but i think there's this one sentence that he once said on one of his podcasts which left an indelible impact upon me and he said he said honest conflict has a lot more social value than dishonest harmony honest conflict has a lot more social value than dishonest harmony and what often times happens is you know when you're a people pleaser which i was for the longest time still am to some extent when you're a people pleaser you might be gaining popularity in the eyes of the other person but you aren't necessarily gaining respect they aren't the same they aren't the same now when you end up saying the truth right even though it might ruffle the feathers of the other person in the short run in the long run they'll respect you for it so you're ending you you you're actually trading popularity for respect maybe that person doesn't consider you to be like popular anymore but that person will still respect the fact that you had the courage to bring up a difficult topic knowing knowing that you know it might be a corrosive issue to bring up but i think the toughest thing the toughest thing which is a hard skill to acquire is bringing up something you know especially when you disagree right on any specific front in a firm manner yet in a polite manner you know being firm and being polite are not incompatible they are not mutually exclusive you can be very firm with your answer with your opinion with your view yet you can be very polite as opposed to you know being disparaging so don't make it personal i still remember i was never a debater in high school i was a wanna be debater but i never got selected for uh, for my house but uh, the judges during debates would always say do not make personal remarks or personal insults you know talk about the topic but don't talk about the person and so i think that's something we ought to keep in mind as well right having said that the caveat that i will point out here is that sometimes it's actually futile to confront someone especially when you think that you know what your confrontation or you bringing up a valid point will not change the other person or in cases where you think that look there's very limited upside here but there's actually a lot of downside in which case even though you feel that you know what i ought to bring this up if you feel the the upside is limited but the situation could actually head south in other words there's unlimited downside or a lot of downside that's when sometimes it might be best to not approach the confrontation just fucking let it slip fuck it but if you ought to bring it up then bring it up but with dignity firmness yet politeness how to find a mentor i'm looking for a mentor here i'm looking for a mentor who wants to be my my mentor seriously uh i'm looking for a a, a mentor protege relationship there's no mentor in my life yaar no one i can confide in absolutely no one i can confide in i need a confidant i need someone who wants to be my mentor mentor uh yeah to uh to karo yaar koi uh, someone please volunteer please volunteer please email me we can set up like a a, a mentor mentee relationship uh do you read sudha murthy's books just asking no i have not if there any that you would recommend please let me know i haven't me i want to be your mentor okay sagar so this is your elevator pitch elevator pitch your next comment should be you giving me reasons as to why you think you're qualified to be my mentor theek hai so two sentences if it's convincing then that's it we'll sign the fucking document right now let's do it 
cool guys we're close to hitting the the one and a half hour mark um this was fun this was fun a, a, a few announcements before i leave so number one like this video if you haven't already subscribe to my channel if you haven't done that as yet uh, listen 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 so this was like a, a solo podcast right but i want to have like more podcasts with guests as well uh in case in case in case you guys actually know people personally right who you think would make for good guests on my podcast then please can you connect me with those people a small request please can you connect me with those people so i'm looking for i'm looking for two types of people number one if anyone has a a solid story you know doesn't necessarily have to be a, has to be a famous person if anyone has a solid story or the other one being if anyone has a fascinating personality or both or both which would be you know the the best case scenario but either someone who has a remarkable story or someone who has a fascinating personality is a good conversationalist someone i can just like chew the fat with okay if you know anyone it doesn't have to it doesn't have, have to be a famous person if you know anyone please connect me with that person okay you know my email anubhavjain0712 at gmail.com connect kar dena yaar it'll be it'll be good you know uh, because i definitely want to take this podcast forward because i think you know my my conversational skills is uh is something i can i can put to good use during these podcasts live stream with my sister slated for the 30th of june at 9 pm so wednesday 9 pm 30th of june with astagen part 2 part 1 was an absolute crackerjack of a live stream uh and we'll make sure that you know there more fireworks there more fireworks in part 2 so i'll i'll ask asta to come prepared and and let me tell you guys let me tell you guys I'll I'll shut up. I'll try shutting up. Okay, throughout the live stream, I'll try I'll I'll try staying mum. Maybe I'll get some cello tape also. I'll band band dunga apne lips ko because you know I got so much flack, so much stick in the aftermath of the last live stream that we had done saying let her talk, 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 let her talk. So this time I'll make more of a concerted effort to just stay mum and quiet and shush. Okay, such that she can talk because after me she has the Wharton badge. Me ko no yar non Ivy League black sheep. ठीक है कम्युनिकेशन स्किल्स वर्कशॉप डोंट फॉरगेट फोर्थ ऑफ जुलाई इलेवन एम टू टू पी एम लिंक इन द डिस्क्रिप्शन टेन परसेंट डिस्काउंट एंड दैट्स इट आई मीन द ऑडियो वर्जन ऑफ दिस पॉडकास्ट इज अवेलेबल ऑन ऑन स्पॉटिफाई ऑन एपल पॉडकास्ट यू कैन फाइंड द लिंक्स टू बोथ ऑन on uh, in the description so in case you know you're you're someone who actually likes consuming his or her content in audio form then you can definitely uh, check the audio version of this podcast so that's a wrap that's a wrap thank you so much for uh, your uh, your company again this was a lot of fun for me hopefully this was uh, fun for you as well um and we'll uh, we'll meet again i think uh, most likely on the 30th of june 9 pm live stream with my sister brilliant brilliant enjoy the rest of your your night or your day depending on where you might be in the world and uh, thanks again for all your questions hope you enjoyed this uh, until next time take care stay safe keep smashing it and cheers